Mulweni, Igamalam Dungutandi Wimsebenzi. I will be sharing with you guys two projects that I did. The first project is a photographic body of work that I produced this year. And the second project came out of this project, but I'll be touching on it very briefly because we're still conceptualizing it. So the body of work is titled Aundboni. It's a closer word meaning you don't see me. Now, it's got a double meaning. Because when you're saying Aundboni to someone, you could also be saying you are reducing me to nothing. Now, this phrase, I've been reduced to nothing, is something that I'm sure that every single woman sitting here has felt including myself. Now, I grew up in a community where men would lurk around streets looking to violate and harass young women. And when I became a young woman myself, I realized that, in fact, I was constantly reminded that my body and the bodies of other women around me were for the ears, for the eyes and hands of the men that surrounded me. Now, this past year, has been particularly difficult for women living in South Africa because since the beginning of the year, we've been seeing a siege of rapes, sexual assault that have been happening to women, just feeding our timelines every single day. Now, this is not a South African problem. The violation of women's bodies is a problem that is a global one, and it is one that reduce to just boys' locker room talk. So, what sparked this project was an incident that happened to me, which I'll be sharing with you guys. So I was standing back home in Cape Town, and I was waiting for a bus. And as I was waiting there, I saw a man who was dragging a bin, and I could see him in the corner of my eye. And as he walked behind me, he came and he grabbed my bum and he squeezed me. Now impulsively, I turned around and I threw a blow at him, but unfortunately I missed but I hit the bin that he was carrying, and it made a very angry, loud noise, so loud that the, the noise was vibrating out of the bin. So he walks away, and then he turns around, and he comes back. Now, this time, I have bricks on my hands, and I'm ready for him. And as he came close to me, I started throwing the bricks at him, trying to warn him not to get anywhere close to me. But then he started to apologize, and he said that he was sorry. Now, there was something about his voice that was so earnest and so honest. And I remember thinking, okay, so this man thinks that he's entitled to my body because society has taught him that he is entitled to my body. And when this incident happened, I started to think about all the other experiences that I'd had. I remember walking around in Cape Town and Bree Street and a man screaming at me that he wanted to lick my body until it was wet and then impregnate me and make him multiple babies. And I remember my first kiss, it came from a stranger. It was in the public space. He literally threw himself at me and put his tongue in my throat. I couldn't even say anything, I was speechless. And back then, I didn't even know about consent. I did not know that I could say no to this man. So the first time my mother heard any of these stories was at the beginning of this year when I presented this at the Cape Town Design Endeavor. And um, I guess we don't talk about these things because we live in a society where women have to change their behaviors to suit men. Men are never held accountable for these things. For example, had I closed my mouth that day, maybe that man wouldn't have shoved his, th his tongue down my throat, right? So we live in a world that we learn that the violation of women's body has become normalized. So we silence ourselves and we silence our pain. So directly when this happened, I made this image. And when I was thinking about this image, I was thinking about how, as women, we need to hold accountable for things that happen to us. If you're walking around the streets and you're wearing a short skirt, you need to be accountable that someone is going to do something to you, and that is your problem. And so what also happens is, when you start to talk about these things at home, often you're not believed. These things are swept underneath the carpet. So from home already, you learn to silence these things before you even step out into the world. So in creating this body of work, I was really lucky in that I met people, family members and friends who opened up and were telling me about stories that had happened to them. And what I did is I took the stories and I creatively created work about them. Now, the first time I ever learned about rape, I must have been four to five years old. My mother was giving me a bath and she told me that, listen here, I want you to know this. You must never let anyone touch you here. 
and she showed me particular parts of my body that I should never let anyone touch. And I guess she was telling me these things because she wanted to protect me, because beyond her eyes, she could not protect me. Now, this thing of rape is something I think a lot of women are afraid of, including myself. It's like this monster that is out to get you, and every day, you wonder if you will be next. So, this is my grandmother's bed, and on this bed are weapons. Now, when I was in the Eastern Cape visiting my grandmother, she was telling me that she's afraid of being raped. My grandmother's very old. She says that when my male cousin, who's 14 years old, is not around, she makes sure that she sleeps fully clothed and she has weapons under her bed so she can protect herself. So when I found these weapons, I took a photograph of them, and then I realized that, hang on, my grandmother was not the only woman in my family who had weapons under her bed. There were other women in my family who kept weapons under their bed. That's my mother's bed. You do not want to mess with this woman. <laughs> she will kill you. <laughs> so um, when I created this project, I wanted to break the silence. But being a photographic body of work, it could only be shown in a gallery, and there were limited people who could see the work. Now, luckily for me, when I presented this work at Design in Daba, I met a designer called Viwe, and he really wanted to collaborate with me. And he, he, like me, wanted to bring this conversation into the bigger public. So we got together and created a project. But it's still very rough. But I'm going to share with you anyway, because I think it's important. So we're still conceptualizing it. It's not fully, fully, fully proper yet. But the idea is that we want to have use the VR experience. We're going to have VR and headphones, and we're going to have a physical object, which is going to be the bed. And we're going to put this bed in a public space where people can come and be active. And their story is that so a person will put on the VR glasses and the earphones, and the idea is that they're walking into a space that they might be familiar with, and as they're walking, there's a sense of fear that starts to build up in them. It could be via sound or footsteps that we put in the sound. And then they walk into a room, which is comfortable, they lay on the bed, and as they're laying on the bed, they start to fall asleep, things start getting vague, they close their eyes, and then they're woken up by a sound of something dropping on the bed. When they open their eyes, there's a dress that hangs on their light and the dress is dripping of blood. And the dress just drips and drips and drips until it's dried out, and it's just nothing but brown, old, stained blood marks. Now, I know that this might sound like a horror story, but it's not. We're still in the conceptualizing phase of this project. And um, the other thing is that um, if you noticed in the slides, there are words that are written there. Now, what we try to do is that we're very aware that Every time a narrative is created about women, they are the ones who are victimized. And what we're trying to do here is to allow men to question themselves so women aren't always victimized. So we're very aware of that. And we use this word saying, obulele. It's a closer word, and it has a double meaning. So it could either mean, obulele, were you sleeping, or obulele, did you murder? And just to close this off, in my father's words, um, rape is murder.